Hello and welcome to Mad Science Gaming. Emphasis on science today as we look at a video I made for the last class needed for my certificate of electron microscopy from Delta College. In this video I will be talking about a specific function of one of the microscopes at the college in an instructional manner. Enjoy. Hello, today we'll be doing channeling on the Tescan Vega 3. Channeling is a mode that allows it to do something akin to electron backscatter diffraction which can give insight into the crystal structure of your sample. Uh, so naturally you need a crystal in sample and you need, for this particular one, you need a polished sample, so something nice and smooth. First thing you want to do after you loaded your sample is zoom in, find a particle as uh, symmetrical as possible, and zoom in, and the software recommends a working distance of about 8 millimeters, a uh, beam intensity of about 10 to 14, and a KV uh, 20 or greater. And it also recommends that your particle be about 20 microns in size. So we have this one here, it's rather nice. So we send it, center it on up to the best of our ability. Um, and then we need to switch to the backscatter detector. And here you'll notice I have the backscatter detector like really high in contrast, really low in brightness. In fact, my brightness is at zero. Uh, that's because you need high, con really, really high contrast to see the lines that form in the EBSD uh, mode, the channeling mode. So now we're going to go here over at mode and then switch to channeling. You'll be greeted to a view kind of like this. It might be off to this off center. And if it's off center, you go to adjustment, manual column centering, and then hit next. And then you go through the steps. So step one is you find your particle and you want to cent uh, center it as good as possible. This one is already centered. You use the two knobs on either side on the pad to center it. And then, so next, and in this step, you want to get your object as symmetrical as possible and as close to its original shade as possible. So this one has a little bit of white in it. Let me see if I can get it to be more black. No, that's... Okay, so it looks like that's about as good as we can get. So then we go on to the next step, which this one is just how f you want it, your object to fill the uh, field of view. So you just uh, use the left knob to zoom in on the object until it just about covers your field of view. And after we've done that, we have the same view once we hit finish. So that means channeling is done. So we'll switch back to resolution, move the stage over to a new location, Go back to channeling, and if we slow down the scan speed, we can start to see the uh, lines form. This might be a bit much, but because you can already see the lines more or less on the screen right now, but if you slow down the scan speed, you can really start to see the defined cro uh, lines here and one here, and there should be another one horizontally once it gets to it. And these are Kikuchi lines that result in the electron beam diffracting when it hits the crystalline structure of the polished sample. Because what the microscope is doing in this mode is it's leaving the electron beam on one spot and rocking it in all directions. So the result of the rocking is these line patterns because the, ref the electrons reflect backscatter better in certain directions and backscatter worse in others. So you can see there's the light, the brightest spot right beneath, and you know brighter spots there and there and there and there. And because this is monocrystalline silicon, uh, it's probably why this pattern is so simplistic. I would imagine with a metal, it would be a lot more diverse with a lot more lines. And there you go. That is the channeling mode on the Tescan Vega 3.